I'm Adam Blattenberg from Diesel World. Hi, this is Dan, owner of Dan's Diesel Performance. I'm Christian Roth of BD Diesel. I'm Braden Fleece, and you're listening to the Diesel Podcast. What is going on, Diesel Nation? We're excited to have you guys with us today on the Diesel Podcast. We're going to be joined by a sponsor of the show, RevMax Converters. And I was chatting with Frank there recently, and he was telling me that there's a ton of common questions and major misconceptions as it relates to torque converter stall speed. And he wanted to uh, sit down with us and, and chat with us about what torque converter stall speed is and really where it should be set for you know, a truck that you're daily driving versus you know, some of the more performance applications that are out there and things to consider whenever it comes time to upgrade your transmission or your torque converter, how you can make sure that you keep the drivability there, have the torque multiplication, the efficiency, everything you're going to want when you get a new torque converter into your truck. Before we get to the podcast, we want to let everyone know if you're on a podcast app listening and you want to see some of the trucks that we're talking about or some of the parts, make sure you go to YouTube, search the diesel podcast and subscribe and then hit the notification button. So when we release new episodes, you'll be notified right away and you can see the, the products, the trucks. There's a lot of great comments and show suggestions that we get there as well. We're always checking them and reading them. So we invite you all to do that if you listen on podcast apps. All right, let's get to the podcast with Frank and chatting about torque converter stall speed. Frank, welcome back to the Diesel Podcast and talking transmission, torque converters, and all things related to getting the power of the ground on, on diesels. It's always really cool to chat with you, and there's always a ton of great information that I, I learned during our discussion. So welcome welcome back to the podcast. Oh, well, thanks for having me back again. And I think hopefully today we can give some of our listeners out there at least a little more knowledge in a very black magic skeptical world. Yeah, when you were chatting with me about some, you know, some common questions you get from customers and I'm, I'm sure even transmission shops this this topic i i will fully admit to me it's just like magic that happens so i'm going to be learning along with everyone else but torque converter stall speed and just <clears throat> all that goes into it for i mean how and and where it's set at where it should be set at and there's just tons of questions so i'm really looking forward to to jumping into it and i wanted just to start with the, the you know the general part of it is what is stall speed all right, so stall speed is a very tricky question, and it's something I wish we could rewrite the book on for the diesel community. Um, on a diesel truck, stall speed is a variable number. There is no such thing as the stall speed on most trucks. So let's let's discuss why that's the case. So uh, the stall speed of a converter, if you had a naturally aspirated motor, it's very easy to figure out what it is. So if we were to put a, tr a car on a trans brake, which basically locks, binds the transmission up, so the brakes are no longer limiting it, nor are the rear end gears, nor is the weight, and we floor it, we will come up to a number where our RPMs will stop going up. And that right there is our stall speed. Simply enough, without getting in the hydraulics inside the converter, which we can go in later on into if we have time, but that's our stall speed. Now. That's completely different in a, diesel, in a turbo diesel application. And the reason being, and the same thing also for a turbo gas application. So for a naturally aspirated car, let's say that makes 500 horsepower and you do this test on it. Uh, the, let's say the stall speed's uh, 3000 RPMs on any given, on this one given torque converter. Well, if you raise the power level to let's say 700 horsepower, the same torque converter will now stall probably around 4000 to 4500 RPM. And conversely, if you lower the power, the stall speed will go down. Now, several other things will come into play as well. If we're not in a trans brake, the size of your brakes, the size of your tires, rear end gears, the weight of the vehicle, the turbo size, all that stuff will all come into play eventually. Um, the turbo side, of course, only on the turbo applications. But um, so when people are using the word stall speed, um, they're using a terminology that doesn't work well in the turbo world and especially on the turbo diesel world. So it's very frustrating when um, you'll see advertisements and all these diesel magazines, they're, they're the worst. You'll see all these different manufacturers advertising a 1200 stall speed torque converter. If you put a 1200 stall speed torque converter in any diesel pickup truck, the truck won't even move, okay? It'll basically strain itself to try to hit that get that turbo light, which is at 1700 RPMs, it will never get there. So 
you'll see that and you'll see people on their on their websites advertising at 2100 or a 2300 or a 2600 stall speed and that is a moving target that nobody that is advertising this has a clue what work unless they can only give you one vehicle on one day with one one tune on it that's where that thing will stall at you put it in any other application it will be a different stall speed even if the horsepower only changes by 50 horse or one little variable changes, it's still not gonna be that same 2300 stall speed. So that is what's always difficult when a customer calls and asks, well, hey, I wanna, what stall speed is your ultra low stall speed converter? And the way we basically will explain to a customer and try to get out of this stall speed number, because again, it's a moving target that nobody can pin down, um, is if you took a stock torque converter out of, let's say, a a 2020 Cummins and you took the torque, the torque management off the truck. So you could actually get up to stall speed, which, cause the new trucks will actually limit you from being able to do that. You will see with, on about a hundred horse tune, you will see the stall on a stock brand new 2020 truck is 2,500 RPMs. People go, how could that be? It's, it's not possible. It is possible. It's about 20, 2,400 to 2,500 RPMs. Now what will happen is it'll come up to 1700 very slowly. And if you're in four wheel drive and you keep your foot on it, once that turbo spools up, the power builds, like we talked about earlier, the stall speed comes up. So it's about 2,500. But on that same truck, if you change the turbo out, you change the tune out, you change anything out or the rear end gears or the tires, anything, you change anything that's gonna, that's gonna affect the stall speed or the flash stall speed at some point down the road. So. The way we like to explain to customers, the easiest way is stock stall is stock stall. So if we sell you a stock stall 60 RV converter, you can you it will be exactly what came out of your truck before. Now, if your truck was 2700 RPM or 2300 RPMs or 2400 RPMs, that's what you can expect out of our out of our stock stall. So your truck is the target that we're going against. Now, if you were to take the same torque converter and make it a low one of our low stalls. You know, we're going to be generally in the 200 to 300 RPM lower than the stock number. And then our ultra lows are going to be in the 300 to 400, maybe 500 in, in a perfect world, uh, lower than the original stock 60 RFE torque converter that was in that vehicle. And the same thing goes for 48, same thing goes for Allison's. So rather than use a stall speed number, you'll notice that we don't use a number, we use a description. So we have an ultra low, a low, a stock and a high and on some applications, a medium high, and then an ultra high stall. And that will just give us a number as, you know, on the same test vehicle, we've tested all those converters and we know where they're gonna basically line up against each other. The tough part for me, <clears throat> I'm thinking about stall speed is if I'm not, if I don't have my foot on the brake and I'm not trying to see how high I can get the RPMs before the tires take loose, which probably 99.9% .9 of driving is not done like that. Then I think, what is what are the driving characteristics? Stoplight to stoplight, getting on the freeway um, with a trailer behind me, and the drivability. And I wanted to ask you about that portion of it. Is if somebody calls and says, "Hey, I, I tow a lot," which I imagine they would really be focused on a low stall or ultra low stall converter. What changes with the drivability with those on a near stock or a stock application versus the stock stall that they're used to? Uh, great, great question. So if you were to do some data logging, which we've done so much of over the years uh, of a stock torque converter, again, we're gonna use a, a 60 RFE, you know, our, our test trucks are 2020 right now. There's a great one to work off of. Uh, again, about 2,500 RPMs is your stock converter stall speed with a small tune on it. Um, you will notice that when you make a one, two shift and you're in second gear, you will see about a thousand to 1200 RPMs of converter slippage when you make that one, two shift. So you're gone from first, gone to second. What does that mean? Well, think about it. If you're, if you've just burnt up 1200 RPMs of power is going out as heat into the transmission and never make it to the tires. So we're gonna start talking now about torque multiplication versus efficiency, which is also known as coupling. So with torque multiplication, you know, if you, 
if you want to have a really, really responsive truck on the bottom end that just feels like it's like a cat ready to, to lurch and it's, it's just really ready to go, a higher torque multiplication, torque multiplication converter is going to feel very good to you. So you say, well, man, everyone wants that, right? Man, I want my truck to just take off and go. I, yeah. I want that feeling. I want it to feel like a gas car when it takes off in first gear. Well, whenever there's always a give and a take. So if we, if we build you a high torque multiplication torque converter, again, it's going to launch hard, even under light throttle, and it's going to feel very, very responsive initially. But as soon as the power builds up, that converter is, be, is going to become very, very inefficient due to the blade design of e either the pump of the torque converter or because of the stator. And we could have a whole episode about components in another day, by the way. That's a whole another episode. But um, so if, if we build you a high multiplication, high torque multiplication converter, let's say like a 2.3 or a 2.4 or 2.5 multiplication torque converter, that means that torque converter is going to output 2 to 2.3 to 2.4, say even 2.5 times the amount of input torque out to the transmission. So yes, it's going to feel very responsive. But in order to do that, there's a trade. And that trade is efficiency and coupling. So the guy that has a stock tune in his truck that doesn't lock until third gear or fourth gear, which is what we recommend uh, for many reasons we've talked about in the past, is going to want a converter that doesn't necessarily have that torque multiplication, but it has the efficiency also known as coupling. And, and now the question is, why does that guy want that? Well, if you got a converter that's efficient, you are gonna be wasting less power in heat and more power actually making to the rear tires of the truck. So what we what we've done over the years is our designs in your you know impeller blade angle or impeller as in the pump and the converter or a stator design blade angles number of blades um, the the design of the blade the length of the blade there's so many so many things that go into it um, our designs are that are have been changed over time you know to to either give the customer more torque multiplication or more coupling. And all of our new stuff that we're working on nowadays is we're not so much, we're not so worried about torque multiplication. We're much more worried about coupling. What exactly is is coupling, and how would how would somebody that um, you know isn't you know really familiar with torque converters or transmissions? How would they know what that is by feel or response or just just driving the truck? All right. So the best way to explain to do this is again now coupling only comes into play when the converter is unlocked. So if the converter is in lockup, there is no coupling. The, the, the converter is mechanically, mechanically linked by the lockup clutch to, from the front cover to the input shaft of the transmission. They're one-to-one. -one. What that means is the turbine and the impeller are both spinning at the exact same speed because they're locked up one-to-one. -one. Anytime it's not locked up, there's always slippage. Um, and you know there 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 are many easy ways that the consumer can actually tell slippage in their own converters. Um, if you have a Snap-on scanner, the easiest way is just to pull up uh, the PID on your Snap-on scanner uh, and look at converter clutch uh, uh, TCC slippage. And uh, no, sorry, not TCC slippage. Um, um, turbine slippage, uh, com uh, converter slippage down low. And what you'll see is uh, you know you might be burning up 800, 900, 1200, 1400. Some of these really badly poorly designed converter things we've seen come through here from other, other places, um, high stall converters. We love to see those on diesel trucks. Those, those guys will slip 17, 1800 RPMs in second gear, just burning up power. They launch great, they come up in the charger quick, but you better be doing something quick because you're blowing all your power out. You're not doing anything with it. So. Um, there, there, you can always monitor that, um, and we can also show, you know, send you guys some links on how we do that, so, you, so the consumers can see how to monitor it themselves. Um, but again, so you're going to notice your efficiency and coupling, coupling when the converter is unlocked. So anytime, usually like first, second, third, and maybe in fourth gear uh, on a 68, first, second, and third on a 48, especially on a 48, um, in an unlocked state, uh, that's when you're going to feel it, and it will feel. When you give it gas, your RPMs will go up at a much faster rate or be prior to 
the speedometer catching up to the RPMs. So you're never gonna get 100% efficiency on any torque converters, it's not possible. Um, but you know, some of the newer designs we're working on right now, we've got our slippage down to about 8%, which is incredible. It's, you know, if I told you, when I tell you the numbers of the factory converter, it, it's incredible, but uh, we're down to about 8% you know, on some of the slippage on, on our new designs we were, that we're about ready to release here shortly but we're still able to spool our turbo up on the bottom end. So, you know, you take a stock converter, for instance, in, uh, in, in second gear on a 60 RFE bone stock, you know, you're around, a, you know, anywhere from 900 to 1100 RPMs a slip with a stock converter and a tune in second gear. We've got these new designs down to 300 RPMs a slip in second gear. So one third the amount of slippage, all that power make it to the rear tires huge difference. So if you're towing and until that thing locks up, you will notice a, a immense difference between a stock torque converter and an efficient coupling torque converter. So you would, you would notice that not just in the, the response of the truck, but also I'd imagine transmission temperatures as well between. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what we hear a lot of complaints with when you, know, you have a truck for a little bit it could be new or just one that, that you pick up and you know we start to monitor different things and we see that the temperatures creep up to you know a level that we've read or been told is a, a danger issue and it can almost it, it can be we'll see so many products that are sold trying to address that you know with coolers or two coolers or just different things and a lot of times it's just the converter that's in the truck just isn't right that's correct. Or the converter was right for a prior application. And now what you're trying to do with the converter is no longer working. Um, again, when power goes up or your weight as in towing goes up, efficiency really comes into play in a torque converter because you're, you're wasting so much power inside that converter and generating heat out of it. And with, with the people that call in that say, you know, what percentage or what, what type of what type of truck owner is looking for a low stall? I imagine high stall stuff is just all race and, you know, things like that. But, you know, what, what kind of questions are they asking you guys when they have that truck that's either near stock or stock or, you know, something like that. And they're, they're saying, well, I, I mostly tow with it or I'm hauling with it daily driving. Where exactly do I need this stall speed or is it something where you guys have it set up where you know 97 percent of trucks that are built like that are going to need this range depending on you know what whether it's cummins duramax power stroke what year it is what transmission setup sure i mean generally speaking on the 68 side of things and even on the 48 side of things if you're in a you know in a 467 size turbo or smaller on a single setup you know, our 60 RV, our, our, our low stall, our standard low stall is going to be a great setup. If you're on a stock charger or very close to stock charger, the ultra low is going to be perfect for you. Now, if you're towing heavy and most guys are towing heavy, do not have large charger because they don't tow well. Or if it is, it's a twin setup, which has, you know, immediate spool up that ultra low stall setup is going to be the way to go. And again, the reason being is that efficiency before it locks up, instead of making heat, we're making power. What's really interesting to hear is because you're right, for a really long time, we've thought of stall speed as a truck owner, consumer enthusiast as a number, right? So when people are calling around or, or, or you know, Googling things and looking stuff up is there's probably 20 years worth of posts up there of, well, you need 1200, you need 1400, you need 1500, you need 1300. And that leaves so much. It doesn't really give an answer, I guess is what I'm getting at. It doesn't really tell you, well, for, you know, your particular setup on this truck, that's too low. You know, it's going to be too, too hard to, to reach that sweet spot of power and really torque. And I think that's why there's so much confusion, even for people who own shops and, and people who work, you know, in the industry in different capacities. It's just like the stall speed and torque multiplication and fluid coupling. It can just be so overwhelming that I think we just want a simple answer. You know, we just want to be able to say, hey, this is my truck. This is what I've done. What stall speed do I need? And I know the racing crowd's different and they're probably testing converters every other weekend 
and you know they get to play around with it a lot but as a somebody daily driving one i don't have the time money or patience to test 15 different converters in a month or two months yeah and, and again your your initial sentence there information on the internet when we've talked about this many times in the past nine and then the converter realm i'd say 90 percent of what you read in the internet especially on forums and 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 places like that and chat groups and all that kind of stuff it's either it's not put up there you know with any kind of malice or someone trying to throw a guy off and, and make him buy the wrong thing it's just repeating incorrect information from somebody else who got incorrect information who was an expert they thought at that point and again on the diesel stuff the worst part about it is stall speed stall speed stall speed stall speed i mean i'm patrick i'm serious when i overhear our sales calls here you don't know how many times someone asks for a day it's got to be a dozen times a day what is the number of the stall speed that converter is going to be it's every day and (laughs) so we you know part of this whole podcast thing has been for us to educate the consumer the consumer has no business knowing what a torque converter is unless he's going to buy one and when he goes out there and he's trying to do his due diligence and he's trying to do the right thing and trying to get you know knowledgeable and, and trying to do his homework when he's reading stuff that is incorrect but is backed up by other incorrect information to make it look like it's correct it's it's very difficult and i can totally understand why like you said, even most shops, I would say the, ma- the majority of most shops don't understand stall speed. And it's and there's, that's not a knock against the shop. It's just something they don't mess with. It'd be like you asking me about, you know, something about lifters or a camshaft or a crank or pistons. I have no, I have no idea. You don't even want to ask me about it. I'll just give you the wrong information because it's something I read on the internet myself too, probably, you know? Yeah. So, um, that, that's the misinformation is the biggest thing. And, um, you know, getting a properly matched torque converter to the truck is a huge thing. And even a bone stock truck, if you took a brand new Cummins truck and you didn't do anything to it and you change the converter in it, I'm telling you, it is a night and day difference. If you go to a tighter, i.e. low stall, better coupling aftermarket design. Now, we never got into another part of the, uh, the converter discussion, which is lockup. Where does lockup play with, with the coupling and stall speed? And why do we care? I mean, why do people care? Like, you know, there's people out there who want their converter, their, their tunes or their truck to lock in second gear. Well, why do they want that? They want coupling. They want that efficiency. They want that throw, you know, they, they want to get thrown back in their, in their seat. Because they, instead of wasting 30% of your power, you've now taken that power and put it into the tires. So that's why people want early lockup. But again, a good coupling torque converter, while it won't give you 100% of that, it might give you 80%, 85, 90, 92, 93% of that, which is a lot better than the factory one, which is 70%. So there's that, there's that part of it. And the next part of lockup is, well, what, what are the ramifications and why do companies like RevMax and our competition that know, that know, here's the key, why do they not want people locking their converters up in second gear? Well, there's, there's several reasons. Well, we've, we've already talked about any time that you are not making that power to the tires, it's being generated into, there's still energy being created and it has to be dissipated. The only way it gets dissipated is in heat. It's got the heat's got to go somewhere. It can go into the fluid. It can go into clutches. Okay. So let's say you've got a truck and it's an extremely loose converter. Let's say it's, you know, a high stall converter. It's 3000 RPMs. You launch that truck. You get that thing in second gear. It's at 33, 34 RPMs and you lock that, that converter. Well, those RPMs are going to drop probably a thousand RPMs, but there's a lot of heat now that just got that got generated by locking that up. And where that heat goes is A, into the fluid, which is not that big of a deal. But the real problem is, is that heat goes into the converter clutches. And the converter clutches, they're very thin. The material that a clutch in the converter and any clutch in a transmission, they're not really thick. You know, we're talking in, you know, on a converter, they're, 
they're 90 to 100,000 thick, maybe 150 on some, some setups. They're not very thick and they're very big in diameter. We're talking 12 inches in diameter. So if you get a lot of heat into that, that clutch, that steel plate in, that was, what's part of the clutch, it will actually bow or warp. And what will happen is that will then get stuck on the teeth that it, that it interfaces with as part of the clutch surface. And as soon as that happens, you burn up your lockup clutch in the converter. So, you know, people that are going down drag racing uh, every weekend, locking their converters in second gear, they're ripping through lockup clutches no matter what they do. And the reason why is the converter is so slippery and so loose, there's so much heat gen that's generated on that lockup that it takes those clutches up pretty quickly. And then the second, one last thing, the second part of converter lockup that people are always complaining about, again, it's so prevalent on tuned 68 trucks due to poor tuning and also tuning that institutes lockup in second gear. And what happens is if you take a factory torque converter, we're going back to the factory one, a 2,500 stall converter, we've just talked about it has about 1,100, 1,200 RPMs of slip in second gear and you lock that up. Well, you now have to, you now have a 1,100 or 1,200 RPM bite basically. So your RPMs are dropping by a huge amount. And what that does is gives you a very firm and hard lock lockup apply. And that will snap shafts. It will rip out the clutches in the converter. It will damn, and again, it will damage the clutches also inside the trans. So the closer and more efficient and coupled your torque converter is, the smoother the lockup apply is going to be and the less wear and tear you're going to have on the trans. So anyone who locks a converter up, a stock converter with a ton of slip in second gear at wide open throttle or even half throttle, every time you do that, you are putting immense wear and tear on that transmission and torque converter. That's, I, I was just thinking when you were mentioning that the, you know, like the guys who are racing, I think it's expectations. Like they expect they're going to have to, th there's, there's some causes to <clears throat> making big power and, and doing that. And, and they know that they know that if they're going to be locking the converter, you know, say in first gear on a 48 or after the one, two shift or something like that, they expect it. But on a daily driven application, where you're towing, you're putting thousands and thousands of miles a year on it and then commanding lockup or on an older transmission, a lockup switch or something like that, doing that over and over and over again, I imagine is just complete carnage on a transmission with the heat and the shock and everything else that's just happening mile after mile after start and stop and everything else. A hundred percent. And we, again, we've talked about this in some of our earlier shows and that's why I try to always build upon what we've talked about in the past um, and, and, and for some listeners out there that may be this may be their first episode because they saw something they like to hear about, go back and listen to some of the stuff we've talked about before, because it will make today's conversation really make more sense. It'll really come full circle when you do that kind of stuff. Um, and you get the full chunk information versus just one little piece of it. But we've had an entire show about shafts and shaft breakage. Yeah. What did we talk about? We talked about early lockup back then too. This is not a new concept. But now we're finally getting to the point where I can then explain to the viewers and, and listeners exactly what we mean by, you know, locking it too early, why that's causing issues. You know, another way to look at it is if you think about an airplane when it comes in for landing on, on lockup, you know, the tires in the airplane aren't spinning. Okay. The airplanes come flying down. The ground's not moving. When those tires hit the ground, they bark and they chirp. Same thing is happening in your converter clutch. Same thing. You are trying, you're making a, a you're, you're bringing everything to an absolute stop, like you're locking the brakes up in your car. Same thing. So if you can gradually bring that, that the difference of speed, the differential of speed, uh, again, slippage to a lower number, when that does happen, there'll be a much smoother transition and put far less wear and tear in your trans. Now, if we were to take as an example that 2020, and um, let's just say, let's say it was stock. So there's no modifications, no nothing. It's just 100% stock. And we were to swap the torque converter and do, say, the ultra low stall on it. Is, does that, what's being changed with stall speed and the fluid coupling and, and all those improvements? Does it have any detriment 
to the transmission. And I asked that because I've gotten questions for years about, can I just do a torque converter upgrade? Do I need to do the full transmission? Will it hurt anything else? And, and I, I think that question mostly comes from 68 RFE owners. Um, I'm sure everyone would have that question, but that's what I've noticed a lot of the people messaging in will ask is, can I do just a torque converter and be okay with the transmission? The answer is 100% yes. It will hurt nothing to put a more efficient torque converter in there. If anything, like we talked about earlier in the episode, it will give you less heat, less slip, and, and more durability, and it'll be easier in your shafts, your transmission, and your flex plate. Um, basically, your entire drivetrain, everything will be will, will like it. Now, that doesn't mean you need to go and take a brand new truck and put a converter in there, you know. But again, when you start turning the power up, you start doing more stuff to it you really should start looking at doing, you know, looking at a converter as one of your, your, your first mods versus one of your last mods. It's if I think back to any upgrades I've done to a truck, any of them that I've had, the biggest difference I ever noticed was with a torque converter. And I think it was because of, I felt it all the time. It was something doing you know 30 miles an hour. I would notice something on the highway I would notice. And I think as a truck owner, it can be one of those things where we think, okay, if I'm going to buy a torque converter, I'm going to drop the transmission or take it to a shop. You know, I'm going to spend X amount of money, but I could get this different turbo instead, or I could get this different intercooler or these other things that are easier to install or they look better or they're just whatever it might be. But really the most improvement I've ever felt on a truck was with a torque converter and, and just the change of, drivability and just how it felt and even in transmission temperatures. And so I think sometimes it gets overlooked, but it, it plays a part from the moment you start it up until you shut it off. Like it, it's always something you're always going to feel. It's not just when you hit a certain RPM and the, and the charger lights or when you take it to the track for the weekend. A hundred percent. You couldn't, you couldn't have summed it up better than that. I mean, yeah, it's not torque converters are not sexy. Okay. You don't, they don't, you can't open the hood and see this beautiful, you know, billet torque converter. It's buried in there. You'll never see it again. It's full of oil. It's not really fun thing to take in and out, as you said, but it's something you do feel every time you start that truck up, whether you're, you're on boost or not on boost, towing, driving around like a grandma or at the track racing it, it's always present and you will feel a difference. And not all, well, another thing is not all converters are created the same. You really need to be careful about what converter you put in your truck. You need to make sure you're buying it from a reputable company or a reputable company's dealer that knows what they're selling you because everyone will now watch, will probably start selling a low stall converter, ultra low stall converter. There are, I could probably, without trying, come up with 20 different designs right now of stuff we see every day that comes in here. That's a low stall or ultra low stall converter. 19 of them are junk. Worse than what you started with as a, as a stock stall converter. Now, there's one, there's a couple designs, not even 19, let, let's probably 15 of those 20 are bad. So there's probably five that are good. But the problem is those 15 designs are the majority of what we see come in the door. The five that are good are the minority that we see come in the door. So you need to really make sure that who's selling you this converter isn't, it hasn't been, it's not just a converter shop, a converter shop that builds uh, nine and a half inch race converters, uh, you know, for turbo 400s is not the same guy that's going to know necessarily how to build a good diesel converter. The stuff he does to that converter doesn't, tr it translates over to the diesel converters, but there's so much more to it. And some of the hacks we call it that, that people have done over the years, machining staters and doing some weird stuff and bending blades and ridiculous stuff and adding holes in the converter and all the stuff, it destroys the converter and it actually is a detriment. You're actually going backwards versus you know forwards in performance. I think one of the parts that can get overlooked as well with that is the vast majority of people are not going to change their own torque converter. I wouldn't. Um, and we're going to be taking it to a shop and you know i've heard this story a lot is hey i bought this torque converter i put it in my truck i don't like how it feels and so i took it back to the shop and they said hey well we'll swap it to this one but we're going to charge you labor 
which rightfully so, you know, there's, there's nothing that happened with the converter. The customer just doesn't like it. It's not cheap. It's, it's hours of labor to do that. And you can quickly spend a ton of money chasing, you know, what, what you want or what you expected, but you, you, you didn't, you either didn't educate yourself or you went to a place or, at, you know, bought something where they weren't sure. And you can eat up a lot of labor money swapping converters. Very true. And, and the other part of that, which unfortunately there's really no way around is, uh, you know, a customer or many shops that, you know, you put a, an aftermarket torque in there. And like you said, you feel a difference. Yeah. Well, you felt the difference. But was it a good difference? How do you know that was a good difference? What data do you have? What what you what told you that you actually got something out of that converter that actually did something for you? Number one, mm-hmm. and the the biggest thing is when you go from uh, let's just say converter company A to converter company B, but use a low stall converter or C or D or E. Let's say the first three or four are one of these gimmicky hokey ho- hocus pocus joke of a design things we see coming our door all the time. And then you put a quality aftermarket converter in there, but you, but you know, you had nothing to compare it to. Well, you may have thought your first converter was, was the best thing you've ever felt. You put a good converter in there. It'll blow your freaking mind. Yeah. That's, I, I, I think a reference point is also, you know, really important with it because, you know, we may not know, we might've just bought one torque converter and we're like, Oh, and it locks up, it, you know, locks up really firm and, you know, it's just like, I can feel it. And you think that's normal. And then you get into somebody else's truck and you're like, wow, that was really smooth. That, that felt really good, you know, and it's, it's different and it, it can just quickly turn, I mean, really bad, you know, with, yeah, with sure. <laughs> what we talked about with the shock and, and input shafts and all these things. And it can go from, you know, a converter price and install to a full transmission. And depending on what kind it is, it's going to get pretty pricey. Yeah, and, 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 and just an example, I mean, the most common hacked up converter design we see, I say in a converter core or aftermarket, you know, when we get turned into us, I'd say it's probably p- present in 70% of the aftermarket converters we see come through here. And yeah, probably 70%, I'd say off, off the top of my head. Uh, there's a design in which the, uh, and it, this has been taught down so many you know generations of converter builders had to, to do this okay and i'll just give you an idea what this is is um the converter builder will go in he'll take the stator which is uh the one way has the one-way clutch in it in the, in the converter and it's also the most important part of torque multiplication and uh they'll take it and they'll cut on the pump side of the uh of that stator and they'll cut that down and they'll make it shorter and they'll make the blade shorter And what that does is without getting into too much detail, it just, it gives you more coupling, better efficiency. Okay. And it also lowers the stall speed. All right. So the guy that just puts out in his truck and just compares to what he had before is like, Whoa, my stall speed dropped 400 RPMs and it feels better. Well, yeah. But if you get a properly a billet aftermarket stator, okay. And you put it into that, into that same converter, or, you know, or swap the converter, you will now have the lower stall speed. You will have, you will not lose your torque multiplication and you will still have the, the efficiency. So that's what I'm trying to, that's the biggest thing I want to get through is there's so many people who think they have this great torque converter until they feel a different torque converter. And then it's really, you know, eye opening. How could I have been thinking all that time that thing was good? It's not your fault. You just didn't have anything to compare it to. So how else would you know? Right. Yeah, that's that, that that's the tough part. And I, I think what's so important about the whole conversation, but especially what you just mentioned there, is how many how much money you can save not having to swap things around. This goes for anything on a truck, but specifically with what we're talking about, is that's thousands of dollars that you can spend and waste and like you know, and if you have one of those torque converters, right, and you spent twelve hundred bucks or fifteen hundred or a thousand, whatever it cost, and then you find out that hey, there's something better out there, they're sending it in as a core, so it's not like you're getting that money back from it. You're you're basically just turning it in to get another one, 
And so you owe it to yourself if, if you value, you know, your dollar and how much you have to really do that research and, and call around and figure out what, what is it that I need and what separates this product from the other four, because it, I, I've heard that a ton of times too. Yeah. I just spent $1,300 on a converter a year ago and now I'm sending it and getting core value. Well, it is just a core, you know, for another company. They're not using. It's actually, the- Patrick, it's actually worse for us than a core, believe it or not. So these botched up converters we get in from these other places. And I also want to clarify for me for that. There are several very good competitors that we have in this industry that make a very good torque converter. We're not the only ones that make a good torque converter. Okay. There are several very good ones out there. So, um, I want to make that very clear. We are not the only ones by any means that can make a great torque converter, but there is a lot that can make a very bad torque converter. And when those come in here, man, those things are honestly, a lot of times they're just junk. They get thrown away. We can't even do anything with them. They, they've hacked them up so bad. They are useless. Wow. That's a lot of money. <laughs> a lot of money. And yet everyone loses. I mean, we lose because, you know, now we lost a core, you know, we gave yeah. your money back, but we got a core that's basically junk. And uh, the customer lost because he was sold a junk converter to start with. So like you said, do, you know, and, and like I said, you know, do your, do your, do your research, you know, call around, talk to the sales staff, you know, don't just, you know, and, and I'm guilty of this too. And the younger generation, I'm not, I'm getting a little older now, but I'm not that old, but uh, you know, I'm guilty of being a lazy consumer. I want to go online. I want to click a button. I want to make it happen. All right. Well, you need to talk to the place that you're, you're buying your converter from also, um, and, or really any trans parts, in my opinion. You really need to get an idea of, of who you're dealing with on the other side of that phone call because websites and places, they can look great and they can look the, like they're these amazing companies. But when you get down to it, it's the Wizard of Oz. There's nothing behind th- that curtain, man. It's just all smoke and mirrors. So really do your, take your time and, and make pick. I know it takes a few minutes, but thousands of dollars. I, I highly doubt most of our uh, listeners make thousands of dollars in three minutes all day long. So, you know, save your thousands of dollars on making the wrong decision and spend five minutes calling a company up and really kind of feeling them out to make sure you're getting what you want. I really want to do a part two. I, I really want to talk about stators, impellers, apply pistons, covers, and have that also be a part of of the conversation today on a separate episode. I know that that would be, uh, you know, a, a whole other conversation, but I think we should do another one and and jump into some of the internal components and what, what are, are some changes, benefits, different things that factor into this torque converter conversation. I think that would be fantastic. Now that, you know, that, you know, people have a little bit of knowledge of what, we're, what we've got going on in a converter. Um, yeah. I think that'd be fantastic. I think the, the listeners would really get to learn some more stuff and, and, and be a lot more educated when it comes down time to, spending that big, that those big dollars on, on, uh, upgraded torque converters. Well, I appreciate you chatting with us today, Frank, and, and really helping to shed some light on something that can be really confusing for a lot of enthusiasts and shops and podcast hosts and, and everything <laughs> else about torque converters and stall speed. And, uh, I, I know you guys are busy over there and, and I appreciate, you know, this episode and then also how they connect to all your other ones as well, where we're talking about shafts and clutches and all those other things. It's a tremendous amount of knowledge and information. And, and I know our listeners appreciate it. And so do we. All right. Well, thanks for having me again. Don't forget diesel fans, make sure and go to YouTube, search a diesel podcast, click the subscribe button and turn on notifications. If you haven't already, there's a lot of really great comments and show suggestions that we get from the, uh, the comments on our episodes. And also you get to see the trucks and you get to see the products. So it's a, a really cool in-depth experience. So if you're looking for more from the podcast, want to see some of these things, that's where you can find it until next time. Keep the shiny side up.